Hello. Hi, everybody. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. It's, it's so nice to be on, on the mission to Mars, Agaton. Okay, so let's move on to comets, which is another extremely interesting topic, uh, like where do comets from, uh, come from, uh, what do they look like, and uh, uh, are they going to show up uh, close to the Earth? Uh, did they spread life? There are all these exciting questions. So this image on the left shows you um, what a real comet, or the, let's say the nucleus of a real comet looks like, uh, as seen from very, very close up. Uh, and then this image on the right uh, actually shows you what a comet looks when it approaches uh, the sun, when it uh, dives very close to the sun, attracted by its gravity. So this is, okay, I'll show you a video actually of a comet approaching, uh, approaching the, um, the, the sun. And this is Comet Ison, uh, also known Comet C3, C3, I believe it's called. Uh, and this one did really end its life getting close to the sun, so check this out. Here is a comet that was a solar eruption, coronal mass ejection, gets close to the sun, goes super fast, and then little by little is dissipated and disappeared. What happened there? Well, all of its material was actually uh, sublimated. It evaporated instantly from uh, the surface of the comet. Yeah, so the next question is what are comets made of? Uh, and I will address this in just a second. Hope, hopefully it will be uh, very interesting to you. Um, but at the same time, uh, I also wanted to show you another three-dimensional. So scientists were able to map using the same exact uh, tools, uh, were able to map the comet Churum of Gerasimenko, which I just showed you. Uh, and this is the actual three-dimensional shape uh, or a model of, a, of the three-dimensional shape of a real actual comet that was visited in 2014 um, by uh, the European uh, Rosetta mission. Isn't that very cool? So we know what they look like, but what are they made of, right? This is a very, very interesting question. Well, actually, I can show you right here how you uh, or anyone really can make uh, a comet or the, let's say the nucleus of the comet, the what are the main materials? Let's try to put them together. All right, so here I have with me the uh, different ingredients of, of an actual comet. What do we have here? We have uh, the receptacle where we will be putting together the comet, all right? What are the main ingredients of a comet? Let's start with some water, okay? So we have nice liquid water. I hope everyone is writing down the ingredients because it's a recipe, people. Uh, okay, so we're gonna put some water in. What else goes inside the water, uh, inside the comet? Well, actually, um, materials, uh, silicates, uh, rocks, and so on, which will represent with some um, um, sand. I hope you can see this. Okay, so we put some sand inside. All right, it's looking great already. Um, okay, then. Apparently, scientists also found that there's ammonia. So we don't have pure ammonia, but we have some cleaning liquid, of which I'll put in a little bit. All right. Mmm, smells fantastic. Okay. Um, there is also alcohol. So we have a little bit of, of uh, ethyl alcohol that I'm going to put in a little bit. All right, not too much. Okay. Then um, there is also graphite. Graphite is uh, basically pure carbon, uh, and that that represents all the different uh, carbon uh, carbon compounds. Um, and it also is what gives the comets the very dark uh, appearance. Um, I don't know if you can see this, um, but graphite is very dark. So I'm going to take a little bit of graphite and stick it in there. Okay. All right. And here's here comes a very interesting part. Um, 
apparently in the last years there were a lot of organic uh, uh, compounds, organic uh, molecules but that were actually long chains um, and many people think may be the source of life. So I'm going to uh, substitute those uh, with soy sauce actually and <laughs> which is also full of organic molecules. So I'm going to put a little bit of that inside. And then, since uh, comets are actually um, uh, out in the, in the dark, cold space, uh, we're going to put some um, dry ice. And I'm going to take some precautions right here, put on my gloves. Dry ice is extremely cold. It's at a temperature of minus 80 degrees. Okay, so I put on my gloves. And we're going to take a little bit of dry ice, okay, and just put it in there. Ooh, check this out. All right, so this is what is happening right now. We're getting, let's put some more. All right, the dry ice is getting in there and it's rapidly, extremely rapidly, uh, extremely rapidly cooling everything down. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix it all up uh, a little bit right here. It's cooling down the water and it's creating this uh, sort of homogeneous, um, uh, homogeneous object which is going to form the, uh, which is going to form the nucleus of our uh, of our comet. Let me put a little bit. All right. Let's see if it's ready. If you guys can see, it's still it's still cooling down. All right. Ooh, it's magical. So let's see. All right. Let's take it out. Ooh, look at that. Can you see this? It's the dark, dark core of a comet, right? It has everything. It has the ice. It has the carbon. It has a little bit of ammonia. It has the uh, the alcohol, and most importantly, the organic molecules. And it's very solid. What else is happening here? It's sublimating, right? So this is actually CO2. The dry ice is actually uh, carbon dioxide, which is sublimating, which is exactly what happens when these comets get very close to the sun. Okay, so this is how we make it, and perhaps you could do this with your science teacher at school. You just have to find some dry ice and some of the other ingredients. 